Hey, you! Yes, you, right now, I know what you want to play, and I know that it's gonna be Man vs. Machine, so I'm gonna be telling you about it, and you are going to like it. But Thanon, what even is MVM, I hear you ask? Man vs. Machine, or as the cool kids say, MVM is a game mode in Team Fortress. But you already knew that. You saw the big button on the menu, but have you ever clicked it? No, but you want to. I know you do. Okay, so let me tell you how it works. First, you go past the obsolete and empty button, and right below that is the the holy grail that you call MAN vs MACHINE! What is this? There is choices? Yes, there is. One for the people who don't want to pay anything, and one for those that try to throw away money. And they are both technically the same button. Only on paper, though. Both modes have you fight against a set number of waves of robots, and have you defend a bomb shoot, in which the robots do want to plant a bomb. Bootcamp is the free version of the both. You can choose between all the different maps that are available and their difficulty. The difficulty dictates what kind of wave you will get. As you can see, the map Decoy, for example, has seven different difficulties, ranging from normal to expert, and each of those actually has the waves going on as well. But to be completely honest, most of the easier waves are just there in case you're dicking about. In stark contrast to that, we have Man Up, the more manlier and pricier version of MVM. This one actually gives you loot when you complete a map, but more on that later. How does stuff work? Well, let's imagine you started with Bootcamp to have a look at what it's all about. After ignoring the instruction video like any sane person would do, you get thrown into the typical class screen. Then you choose a class and get thrown into the map. So you start to wander around and leave the starting area. But I have to stop you right there! Before anything even starts, you will still have some prepping to do. Usually you spawn in front of the big storefront with giant red letters saying UPGRADES! And yes, there are upgrades. If you move close to the store, a window will open, and it has many, many, many small tabs on top, usually like 5 or 6, some classes even have more. One is showing you your character, and then there's your weapons that you have in your current loadout, and a weird bottle at the end. If you click through these tabs, and you have a look at what upgrades are available, you will notice there's quite a few and very fun sounding upgrades. I advise you to hover over them and read the stats of them on the left side. If you click on the bottle looking thing on the right side, you will see that it's called the canteen and it can hold special effects. So if you buy crits for example and use it while in game, you get crits for a short while and a charge is getting used. The canteen can hold three charges of one effect. If you want to buy another effect while already having one effect in the canteen, the new effect will throw out the old one. After you spend all your money in the shop, you will actually notice that there is new UI elements. For example, on the top you can see the wave counter, what robots are attacking in the wave, and the ready screen. This is where you see which person of your team is ready and which isn't. On the bottom left, you have the money you currently have in the green box and the amount of money that is lying around in the yellow box. As soon as someone presses ready on your team, a timer starts to count down and shows when the wave starts. Usually when you start out with MVM, you will get lost. It is part of the process of getting to know the map. Most maps have a pit of sorts where you can throw down robots, or yourself if you are really daring, or suicidal. At the beginning of the round you will see that there are holograms on the ground. Those show where the robots will go during the wave. Okay, all this info is great and all, but I just want to play Team Fortress, so why are you telling me about this? Have you seen the name of this video? This is a tutorial. What did you expect? But no worries, I'm getting into the gameplay now. So you have spawned, walked around a bit on the map and pressed F4 to ready up. If you are lucky, you have found the spawn of the robots. On most maps, it's a small cliff where the robots drop down. So you begin the round and you see that there's different classes of robots. Well, I've played Team Fortress before, and I know that there's classes, duh. You're right, but have you seen them in the giant form? Giant form? Yes. In MVM, there can be quite a few different stats and things happening to the robots. For example, giant robots, robots with constant crits, and quite a few other effects on them. Those robots require different strategies. So, for example, if you are playing on Empire Escalation on Manhattan, you will find that there is a wave of laser heavies chewing through everything that looks at them funny. So, in this example, it's advised to hide behind cover or have a demo or soldier take care of them. But I just want to shoot things! Why is this strategy in my shooter? I reckon you will survive using your brain cells for a bit, especially if you want the team in Team Fortress to be held up to its name. MVM is one of those modes that just requires you to work with people. It is a co-op game mode and you will have the highest success chances if you work as a team with fitting classes. But what class should I take? I'm a good medic, but there already is one on the team. Okay, let me give you a short insight of what roles the different classes play in MVM. 
Soldier. The Soldier is quite a versatile class. He's usually played as a DPS that can also do support. The typical MVM Soldier has one of the three trumpets, or as I like to call them, the Brass Boosters, together with the abilities to blast spies into nothingness and rocket jump to catch robots that ran past the team. He is actually quite helpful. Pyro! For the longest time, the Pyro was one of the weakest classes next to the Spy because of his small range and no versatility. But thanks to the Gas Passer and the Flock, he is now quite viable. The Gas Passer, together with the Explodonic Knight upgrade, allows the Pyro to kill masses of robots. Scout! The Scout is the only class that has the ability to collect money from far away, and he gets healed by collecting money. Usually, he is the one collecting the money because if there is no one to collect the money, you will lose it after a while and it will be gone for the upcoming rounds. Damo. Damo is one of the big trappers. His sticky launcher is one of the best ways to kill robots, since they will run on a given path and not avoid sticky traps. He's usually the one who's used to kill the small uber medics or big robots quite quickly. Heavy. The Heavy is the tank of the team. With resistance upgrades he can take quite a beating, and paired together with some firing speed on his minigun, he will just mow down the masses of small robots. NG. Engineers are a must in most teams. They can support the team so well. Teleporters give the chance to be instantly at the front line, while sentries keep small robots at bay. And before I forget, the dispenser gives all the ammo. So. If you choose NG, you will have to do the biggest favor in the upgrade system. Dispenser range needs to be fully upgraded. It costs almost nothing and it gives you the dispenser an unbelievable range. If you chose to not upgrade dispenser range, I will personally come to your house and spank your ass. Let that be clear. Doctor! Medic! The German medicine man is also one really great class to support the team. The heal? Overheal and the revives are sometimes what decides on whether or not you win a round. And yes, there is revives in this game. When a player dies, you can go ahead and heal the hologram that they've dropped. Oh, and don't forget, you will also get a shield in the upgrade system. And if you use it, it's basically mobile cover. Or depending on whether or not you are really greedy on your damage stat as medic, which you shouldn't be, you can use it to deal damage. Which is like, not good, because they can shoot through the shield then. Oh, I make snipes, good job! Now, we are getting into the area of the really special classes. The sniper is at the same time a weapon of mass destruction and the downfall of every team, depending on the player's ability to hit heads. The sniper has one special upgrade, the exploding headshots. This makes it so that if you hit a head, every robot close to the one that died will take damage. Oh, and the robots you've killed? Yeah, you don't need to collect that money. They will drop red money instead of green money. Red money will collect itself. Hon, 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 hon. Spy. The Spy is with no doubt the hardest class to play effectively in MVM, since as soon as you stab one robot, the others will instantly turn on you and they will clap your ass. So a dead ringer and suicidal tendencies are a must. Now that you know what class to play, how to fight the robots and how to win, there is one big question left. How do I make money from this? There's just one simple answer that answers this. You don't. Man Up vs Bootcamp. As I teased earlier, you can pay for tickets to play Man Up, the way more played game mode. The reason why is depending on which tour you finish. When you first select Man Up, you will see that there's different tours rather than different maps. The most played one is Operation Two Cities. This is our example for today. This one is consisting of two maps and two missions per map. Each one of the missions costs you one ticket, which here in Germany costs 90 cents. So in order to play the whole tour, you would need 3 euros 60. Now, before I continue, I want to get a common misconception out of the way. If you already did a map during a tour, you will have a small white check mark on the right side of the name. This one shows you that you already completed this map. So if you complete this one again without completing the tour, you will get no rewards and you will also lose no ticket. This one is important because many people actually think that they will lose a ticket because of that. Each time you complete a mission in Operation Two Cities, you will get tons of robot parts and some other loot. And after you've completed all of them, your tour number will go up, you will get some extra special loot that everyone wants because of the chance of a golden pan or Australians. and your map progress will reset, making you be able to complete all of them again. Now, I've shown you both game modes, and I just want to do a quick rundown of pros and cons to them. The pros of Man Up are that you get a goal-orientated team. You can also focus more on getting better at the class you want to play, because you don't have to switch as often. And, the biggest one, there is loot. The pros for bootcamp are that it gives you the freedom to experiment and it gives you room for dicking about. People don't take bootcamp as seriously as Man Up, which makes it great for just class stacking and experimenting with new weapons and classes and stuff like that. Now, 
let's get to the cons of man up so i want to get one thing out of the way you will when you first start out at man up have some high tours that actually are really big dicks even i with 155 tours still get some dicks that are just like i want you to play that class and i want you to listen to me i usually ignore them and since i'm playing with friends most of the time we will either talk to them and if they're not listening we'll kick them or they will sort themselves out you know by leaving so with that out of the way yeah that's the biggest con of man up they can be dicks and you will encounter quite a few of them but you will also encounter quite nice people so be wary of that and the second con of this is it costs money. It is essentially gambling with gameplay, you know? You basically have a loot box with gameplay rather than just instantly opening it. It is still something that is fun and I usually play it because there is quite a few people that are actually focused on getting somewhere, but you know, it still costs money. Okay, now to the cons of bootcamp. The biggest one here is people tend to leave more often since it's really nothing holding them there. So the team tends to fall apart sometimes because someone needs to go to the toilet, someone needs to leave altogether and well the team falls apart or you need to switch classes and it can be quite tricky but it also gives you versatility gotta see the good in that and the second con of bootcamp is that you will most of the time have a harder time finding a game in general because there's so many maps and since most people actually tend to play man up you don't have as many people that are playing the different maps so it can happen that you will have quite a few long loading times to even find a match in general Okay, it's conclusion time now that we've reached the end and I want to leave you with a small conclusion rather than a big one and some discussion. MVM is a great game mode if you like cooperative play. I know it can be quite overwhelming with the amounts of upgrades and ways to play, especially if you are playing alone. If you can, try and get some friends to join you on your journey. This allows you to have more fun and be strong against some dicks and man up that are trying to vote you out of the team. If there is someone toxic on your team, just remind yourself that you can mute them. But it can also happen that you have some nice people around. Try and communicate with them. Learn from other people and try to be open-minded about playing a class that you yourself think you might not be as good at. Okay, this was it for the first guide video of MVM. This is a game mode that is very dear to me, especially with all the custom maps coming up lately. I have met great people and some of my closest friends in MVM, so I encourage you all to test it out and see if there's something for you. If you have wishes or ideas for the upcoming guides in which I try to focus on specific class strategies for MVM, leave them in the comments below. And if you liked what I'm doing here, consider subscribing and thanks for watching.